In this episode of the Daily Digest, I'm going to show you how to create a simple and effective vocal chain if you are coming across from GarageBand on iOS over to Logic Pro for iPad because it can be a little bit daunting with all of these new vocal patches. I'm Jade, this is How to App on iOS. Let's dig in. I'm going to open up GarageBand to kick things off. Yes, I know GarageBand. We're going to create a brand new song. Now I'm going to scroll over and find the vocal audio recorder. And we're going to hit more sounds and go to vocals and hit lead vocals. Why? I like lead vocals. I prefer using them. Now I'm going to quickly record something in here as well, because we'll need to do that to be able to save the project. So if I grab a microphone here like this, hello, and just re hit record. La, 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 la. We are good. That is recorded. Now, what I want to do first is show you the vocal chain over here. Let's jump in and have a look at it. Yeah. So we'll just mute this vocal as well. So here's our plugin and effects. And look at all the things that are in here. We've got a compressor, a noise gate, an effect EQ, an enhance tuning, overdrive, track reverb, and a visual EQ. Okay, do we need all of those? Absolutely not. But what I'm going to do is now open this project in Logic just to show you all of these things, how they appear when you transfer a project over to Logic. Okay, so now let's exit this and jump over to Logic. Not that one, it's this one here. And we want to go to our iCloud Drive Garage Band and choose this My Song 393 and hit continue. So here it is, our little project here. Now, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to back out of here first. And I'm going to grab this from here, the recent folder. And I'm going to drag this into our iCloud, into our Logic Pro folder. So at least we can access it from here now. So let's jump in and have a look at it. Now, when I go, here's our vocal chain. It's called lead vocals. It's got some vocal in there. If we go down to our effects plugins, here's all the things that have passed over from GarageBand. Here's our noise gate. We've got a compressor. That's cool. Let's have a look at this compressor. So it's set to a classic VA compressor. That's what it has uh, transferred over from GarageBand. We've got a channel EQ here, which has looks like all the low end has been cut off there. Pretty standard like vocal uh, EQ, that's cool. We've got this pitch correction, yeah, so we've, do we need that? I don't need that for this chain. So I'm gonna start removing things that I actually don't need. So if I hold down on this one, I'm gonna remove that. Don't need pitch correction. I actually don't want overdrive for this. So we'll remove that. Platinum reverb we've been given. Now this is an interesting one because you'll find out in a second, but look next to that, we've got another channel EQ. Because you'll know over in GarageBand, there's two EQs. One is a little, just a tone knob, and one is this second EQ. So we don't need this. I'm going to, let's remove this one. So I'm going to hold down on here, remove that. We'll keep the reverb for now, just so I can show you a few things. I'm going to remove the noise gate. Don't need that. And here is a chain that we have set up, a compressor, an EQ that we can change, and we've got this reverb. Now, if I wanted to add this reverb in by itself, this is very interesting. Let's go over to our audio effects and do a search in here and put, what's it called? Platinum, huh, it's not showing up. All right, let's just do a search for reverbs in here. Chroma verb, N verb, silver verb, space designer. It doesn't seem like this uh, actual reverb is accessible to uh, install. It seems like you can only get it from bringing over from GarageBand. Even if we go over here to our browser and look for our audio patches and choose voice, we'll do a search, platinum. There's no platinum. Search, it's not there. It's definitely not in there. So I can't find that patch. Very interesting, but um, there is a way to get it back here. So if I look for, I think it's 80s. If I do a search for 80s in here, um, let's do, a, I think it's got an apostrophe. Let's do a search. No, it's not coming up. Um, I know there is an 80s uh, sound in here that has vocals. So we've got pop radio vocals. 
Um, there's a vintage vocals, vocal rotary. So all these warm vocals, there's all these things in here, but there isn't the platinum one. And here it is. See this 80s vocals here? That actually has it in there as well. If I drag, I create a brand new vocal track, I'll just show you. We'll go in here um, and just select the default patch. If I drag this 80s patch over here to this new track and go through, we've got a channel EQ, compressor, heavenly, and look, there's the platinum verb. There it is. So you can actually get to it in this 80s vocal patch, and it may be in a couple of them, but there's no way to actually load it by itself. Interesting choice by Apple. Let's remove this vocal track. We don't need this right now because I want to show you what also happens when you import a GarageBand project over in the mixer settings. Let's have a look. So we're going to go to our mixer now and bring this up. This is very interesting. Well, I think it is anyway. So you'll see in our input one, we've got our compressor, our channel EQ and our platinum verb. And you'll notice we've got a bus one and bus two that has automatically been added. And over here, we have our bus one, echo, and bus two has a platinum verb in it. So it's automatically set up a bus for us. So that's great. So we don't actually need now the platinum verb in this chain. So let's get rid of it. We don't need it. Lovely, jubbly, sweet, because we can access the bus at any time by turning up bus two will allow us to add that platinum verb in there or the echo. And remember, you can go in and change these to whatever you like, but when you import a project from GarageBand, it will add these two buses automatically with these two effects in there for you to go for your life. But look at the next track, the stereo out. This is very interesting. Now, very contentious subject with GarageBand was the auto limiting, yeah? And look what we've got on our stereo out here and our uh, mains here. We've got a limiter. That's interesting. So let's check on this. There's our limiter. Do we want this? We can turn it off for now. But also what's in there, if we click on this track and then go down to our plugins, there's a channel EQ and a multipressor and a limiter that is already set for you. Again, when you export a GarageBand project into here. I'm going to leave them off for now because I don't really need them. But this is really cool. So we have a setup here to record vocals in. Now, why do I go with this setup? Because I find it cuts through really easily. It cuts through just really well on anything that I add. Another thing that's missing here is we can't save templates. But you can save a project as a template, and it's something I'm going to do right now because I think it's a great way to start your song each time. So let's do that. Uh, so everything looks like it's all set here. Let's just scroll up and take a look. And so we've got our buses. We've got a vocal track, two buses, an echo, and a platinum. Uh, we've got our, our limiter, multipressor, and channel EQ on the stereo out. Here are all our effects for the main vocal track, which is a compressor and an EQ. Simple. Here's something to remember. I love this. There's no way to actually save a chain of effects. Let's get rid of the mixer. And when you click over here, you I thought you'd be able to save this chain of effects as in your browser as something like an audio patch. But it doesn't seem to be a way to do that. So let's jump out of here. What I have found, if you click these dots and hit copy channel strip settings, until you change that and copy channel strip settings again, that should stay there each time you open a project. Logic has a really good way of remembering things. Let me show you what I mean. We'll jump out of this project, create a brand new project, tracks, audio, it's already put in for us these, uh, this compressor and EQ, which is a default. But if I now go over here and hit paste channel strip, there's our channel strip. So it does remember that for you. Of course, you'd have to go in here in your mixer settings again. And look, we've got bus sends already set up. It kept the bus sends. We'll name this 
Click on here, we'll change this to vocal template. And then we have our vocal template. So anytime we want to open a brand new project, just hold down and hit duplicate. And off you go. Here is the beginning of your vocal template. You are ready to go. You can delete this track out of here. Save this now and it'll be a nice blank template so you can come back to it at any time and start building your songs around that. Okay, let me show you now this, this actual uh, channel strip in action in one of my songs that I'm working on because it is important to show you why I like this setup because I think it just cuts through any mix. Super easy to set up. And then later on, once you finish recording your vocals, you can go and add different compressors and do all that stuff. But this is just going to help, I find, to cut through. Because, as I said, in the beginning, if you're opening this up here, going into your audio patches, hitting voice, there's a whole lot of new voice patches in here. You're probably like, I don't know any of these. I'm used to GarageBand. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. And you're going to be troubleshooting your way to find something. This is just a simple way, in my opinion, <laughs> to set up a simple vocal patch. So let's bring up now a track of mine. This is from my forthcoming album called, this song's called What Color? So I'm going to click on the uh, bottom track here, this choir track down here, and add a new patch in. Let's go to uh, audio patch. And uh, let's have a look at what it's given us as uh, presets. Cool. It's given us a compressor and a channel EQ anyway. And I can just click on this compressor, show it, and we can change to the classic VA, which is what you get when you transfer uh, when you open a GarageBand project. So there's our setup. There's our EQ and our compressor. We can go in here and just do a quick 4K there, over there. Let's, whoops, wrong one. We'll cut this down here. So there we go. A quick, very, very quick patch set up there. And now let's go over here because I already have all these sends. Here's our new vocal track. So it's right at the end here. As you can see, there it is there, this audio track. Let's check that the input set, so it's set to input one. It's set to mono, so that's all good. Now, we want to add these sends in. Let's hit our plus, and we want to add two sends, because as you can see, we've already got the echo and the platinum verb here ready to go. So I'm going to add bus one, which is echo, bus two, which is reverb, and again, all you have to do with sends, let's turn this up. Let's bring our mic across. We got to arm the track. One, two, two. Cool. Very simple. We've got our vocal. Nice. We'll give it a bit of volume there. Let's hear the track. We'll, we'll give it a play and see how it's sounding. Whoa. Sounds like a pretty good volume. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit, bring up our uh, mixer, just bring that down so we can see our levels. We've got it set to record. We'll take it back to the start, hit record, and let's see how this vocal take comes out. Nice, simple bit of uh, reverb going on, no echo. Let's go. Pretty neat take, not too large, yeah, good size file, that looks all right. Let's hear it playing back and in the mix, because what we want with a vocal chain is not too much stuff on there, but we want it to be able to cut through the rest of the song.
sweet. So it cuts through nice and well. We've got plenty of headroom there as well with our, our slider. So that's nice. And then we can just go in and duplicate, and start doing our second vocal track, backup tracks, and it's a very simple chain. And all we need to control here, we've got, because we've got these two buses, we don't have, we're not loading up multiple instances of an echo and reverb, and they're all just these two instances and all of our tracks can just add a little reverb if we want here, add a little reverb there. And it just makes things a lot simpler with buses. But coming from GarageBand, I find that's a really simple way to uh, do so. And now I have this template here that I can just load up at any time. Boom, like that. There's my vocal. I can leave that muted and start recording the rest of my music. And now I've got a vocal with a simple chain in here, ready to go. Simple bus sends, ready to go with our reverb. Bring that up. And it's just easy. And then you can worry about adding stuff all in at the end. Because the most important thing you want to do when you're recording vocals is have a vocal that cuts through right from the very start. And then you can go in at the end and sort everything else. Look, I hope this has been helpful. I don't have all the answers. I'm just saying what works for me, yeah? But this is could be a handy way for you if you're coming from GarageBand. And you know what? You're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Because I, I see it. I hear it. I see people are overwhelmed and maybe going, oh, I'm going to run back to GarageBand. But you can actually use GarageBand to you know, create your, your, uh, your sounds, your stuff from previous projects to understand a little bit better how to use Logic. Anyway, I hope this has helped. My name's Jay. This is How to App on iOS. Been watching the Daily Digest. Remember, do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better and we'll all rise together. And you know what? On the way out, please hit the like, do the share and the subscribe. It really does help the channel. All right. See you later for now.